Hi there, thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy, and this is an upcycling DIY channel. And today we are going to make this gorgeous boho slouchy backpack out of upcycled materials, a lot of blazers, things like that. And it's going to be a patchwork. It has a little carrying handle at the top. It has a flap. Put things in like that. Lots of pretty fringes and trims and backpack straps. This is the first time I've ever made one and I'm obsessed with it. So let's get going. So the first thing I want to do is make two simple patterns. They're both U-shaped, flat across the top. This is for the body of the back and this is for the flat. And we'll start with the big one. Start at the big one by making a square. It's 14 by 14. I use packing paper, but wrapping paper is a great pattern making paper as well. Okay, so here's that 14 by 14 piece of paper. I'm just going to help guide you to make a U-shape like I have, but you can make your U-shape any way you want. So I'm going to take that and fold it in half. Here's my crease side. I'm going to take my ruler and from the corner over, I'm going to measure one inch and make a mark. Then I'm going to measure down 3.75 inches and make a mark along the side. Now at the bottom, I'm going to measure up from the bottom five inches and make a mark. And from the corner over, 3.5 inches and make a mark. Now, this just helps guide that U-shape. Now from this mark, just kind of sketch kind of a little curve to this. Now this side will be straight to here. And now just make a little curve. Now when I get down at the bottom, I flatten that out. Right about that mark and the rest will be flat. And now all I have to do is cut that out. Okay, body of the bag pattern finished. Now I want to make the flap of the bag and it looks like this, the pattern. And I start this out by making a nine by nine inch square. I'm going to fold this in half, just like we did the big one. And on this one, I'm measuring over 1.5 inches, making a mark, measuring down 3.25 inches from the corner, making a mark. From the bottom, I'm measuring up 2.75 inches, and from the corner over, 3 inches. You might have to pause this if you want to do these exact measurements because I know I'm going pretty fast. Okay, so from this mark, I just make a little curve, leave the side straight, come around here, make a curve, flatten it back out. Now I just need to cut it out. Now my two main patterns are made. What I want to do now is set those aside and I made a square pattern that is six by six inches and this will be the size of the squares I create the patchwork with. Okay, so I went to my stash and I just grabbed a bunch of fabrics, tapestry type fabrics. A lot of these are blazers. One is a fabric that was just sold at the thrift store on a hanger and one is an Italian wedding blanket. So I'm just going to play with these. I want to cut out nine squares for the front and nine squares for the back of the bag. And I'm just simply tracing around this pattern and cutting it out. Okay, so most of these are sort of a tapestry fabric. But I do have this little oddball because I really want a piece of animal print in there. 
and it's from a shirt and it's thinner than the rest and it's kind of stretchy. So I am going to back that with fusible webbing. And how I do that, I'm just going to take my piece of fabric and I'm going to lay it right side down on my ironing board. And then I'm going to take a piece of fusible webbing. Now it's bumpy on one side and smooth on the other. The bumpy side is the glue dots side. And I want that side down on top of my fabric. And then I'm going to cover it with a tea towel. And now my iron is on a hot setting. The steam is turned off. And I am just going to press for 12 seconds on each spot. I'm not going to move my iron like this. Just going to hold that down for 12 seconds. And then I'm going to move to a different spot until it's all adhered. Now I have that all adhered on there. I'm going to turn it over and continue making my squares. I'm going to make two on this one. Okay, so now I have 18 squares cut out, nine for each side. So the next step I'm gonna show you, I've already done to this side. I am sewing the three rows together like this. All I have to do is take it to my machine and I'm putting right sides together, doing a quarter inch seam allowance and a simple straight stitch. When I get that one sewn, I'll put this one right sides together with the last piece, quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'll do that to the other two rows here. Now I'm just pressing these seams nice and flat. Now all I have to do is sew these three pieces together. I'm going to do right sides together. So I'll lay this one on top of here. Do a small straight stitch down the edge, a quarter inch seam allowance. Open that back up once it's sewn. Lay this one right sides together and do the same thing. Now I'm just going to press these seams as well. And mine have never lined up perfectly. And don't worry about it because we're not using the edges. We're going to cut a pattern out of here. Now I have two pretty patchwork squares. And what I want to do is go back to that U-shaped large pattern we originally made and I'm going to turn this facing me so I can adjust it how I need it. I'm going to lay it where I want it, trace around it, and cut it out. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, now that I have these cut out, I'm going to go to my machine and I am just going to put a little safety stitch around the edge so that these seams that we sewed don't come apart. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch and I'm going to stay as close to the edge as I can. Now, I need to pick one of these to be my front. Mine are very similar, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. And I'm going to choose this one. And what I want to do first is I have this gold tassel trim and I want to sew it one and a half inches in from the perimeter, sort of like that. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler and something to mark with and I am just going to mark one and a half inches all the way around the perimeter so that when I'm sitting at my machine, I have a guideline. Now, I'm just simply going to take my tassel trim to my sewing machine. I'm going to lay it down at the very top where that first mark is, and I'm going to center this 
with that line. And I will use my largest zigzag stitch coordinating thread and get that sewn all the way around. Okay, so I have this five inch dark green bullion fringe and I want it to be around the edge. Now I have to sew this on a little bit differently. All my little tassels have to be tucked in because I'm going to be sewing around the perimeter. I am going to take this fringe and lay it on the inside of the bag like that. And I'm coming down one inch from the top and I will start sewing. I'm just going to use a straight stitch and quarter inch seam allowance and sew all the way around the perimeter, making sure my fringe is inside. And then I will stop one inch from the top on this side and cut that off. Okay, so here's what the front is looking like. And now I want to start on the flap. Okay, so I'm going back to that small U-shape pattern that we made. And I'm going to use this Italian wedding blanket, a piece that I have left. I get these on eBay. I have a video about it. I'll link that in my description. So I want this about like that. This is really hard to mark on, it's velvety. So I just turned it over and laid my pattern down and traced around it. And now I just need to cut it out. Now I have this sort of green and gold trim, pretty ornate, I love it. And I want to sew it one and a half inches on the inside, just like I did on the body of the bag. So I'm going in and measure over one and a half inches all the way around. Okay, now I have my guideline drawn. I'm just going to take my fringe. Now this has a wide band, so I'm going to do two rows of stitching, one along this edge of this band, and then one along this. So I'll line that up with my guideline at the very top of the flap and I'll make a straight stitch across here and I'll end up trimming that when I'm done. And then my first row of stitching, I'll just go down the edge, line it up with that guideline as I go. When I get completely done, I'll go back and do it on the opposite side of that band here. Okay. So now I have this piece of fringe that I cut from the edge of that Italian wedding blanket and I want it to go around the edge of the flap. Now I tucked my little tassels in and I will lay this right sides together inside the flap and I will start at the very top and do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Now this time I won't sew across the top of the fringe. When I get to a tight corner, I might have to do a little bit of a pinch pleat so that it lays nicely when we open it all back up. So I'll go get that sewn on. I decided I'm going to start this not at the very top, but half an inch down. Okay, now what I want to do is just add a brooch to the center of this flap for a focal point. And I have this cool black and white retro brooch. It's vintage, I believe. And I pinned it on. That makes it a lot easier to sew to get it into position. And I'm going to use black thread because I'm going to sew this on and catch those black petals in the back. So I'll just kind of go up in the center down towards this little black center and bring my needle up 
and I'm going to go in between the petal right here. And then I'm going to put my needle, not up here, but way down towards the center and catch that black petal. And so my stitch is down at the bottom of that black petal and hidden nicely. So I'll probably sew this in four different areas, probably this petal, maybe this one, this one, and this one. Okay, now my flower is all sewn on. Now what I want to do is we have a raw back and I want to line that. So I just went to my tapestries and I found a piece that I want to line this with. And I just used that flat pattern, laid it down on my fabric, traced around it and cut it out. Now in order to attach this, I need to make sure all my fringes and everything are tucked inside the bag. I need to find the perimeter in which to sew. So I'm just tucking everything in. Now I want to take my fabric piece that I just cut out and I want to put right sides together and I will pin all the way around the edge and not across the top. Now I just need to sew this. I'll take it back to my machine. I'll try to use a quarter inch seam allowance. Once we start getting a lot of stuff sandwiched in there, sometimes you have to go a little bit bigger, like half an inch, just to make sure the needle grabs all the materials in there. So I'll just start at the top, sew around the edge, not across the top, and then I'll go back and do it again so that it's double stitched for extra durability. Okay, now I have this all sewn, and when you have a curve, you need to make little snips along that seam so when you turn it right side out, it lays nicely. So I like to go up to that seam or that stitch we just made, but not through, and I go about every half an inch and just snip that all the way around. Now I can turn it right side out. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. Isn't that cute? That's what the back looks like. Now I'm just going to take it to my ironing board and just give these edges a good press. Okay. So I have that all pressed. Now this is still open at the top. You don't have to do this, but I like to sew mine shut just so that it will stop excessive fraying. So I'm just going to my machine and I'm going to line these two pieces together and just do a stitch close to the top. Okay, before I move on to the next step, I'm not thrilled with how this is looking, so I'm going to add something else to it. This is what's left of my blanket fringe, and I'm going to sew that right in here. So I will just lay it at the very top, sew across the top. Now, this bottom edge, here's the fringe. I'm not sewing the fringe, of course, but this bottom edge, I'm going to line that, butt it up against this piece of fringe and sew all the way down. I will use two rows of zigzag stitch. I'll zigzag stitch it close to this fringe here. I actually have to do a few different pieces. And then when I get that all the way sewn around, I'm going to come to the very edge and do another gold zigzag stitch all the way around. Okay, I'm much happier with that. And this is what it'll sort of look like with the flap. 
So pretty. Now we have to make three straps. So I cut out three long rectangles. Two of them are 30 inches long and four and a half inches wide. And this one is 11 long and four and a half inches wide. Now I'm just doing sort of an educated guess that this will be a good length for the backpack strap. Now let me be your guinea pig. We will see. We may say, you know, make it five inches longer or it's a little too long. But this is uh, what I'm starting with. Okay, what I'm about to show you, you'll do on all three straps. You need a sturdy piece of cord. Yarn is not strong enough. It will break because we will be pulling on this. And I will lay it down in the center of my strap and I want it to extend at least a few inches on each end. You know, if you have lots, do like five inches. You really want to be able to grab hold of that. Now I have the right side facing up and I am just going to fold it in half and pin it all the way down. As you're pinning, make sure this cord stays nestled down in the fold of the strap here. When we're all done here, we're going to have a two inch strap. Okay, so now what I need to do is sew this. Now on one end, I will sew it completely closed. I will start here, about quarter inch seam allowance, but when I get to this cord, I'm going to sew over that like eight times or seven or eight, nine times, whatever you think is going to make it feel secure because we're going to pull on that. So go over this a bunch of times, come to the corner and then pivot in your machine and go all the way along the edge, quarter inch seam allowance. And when you get to the end, stop here. We do not want to sew the bottom. Now I have these all sewn and what I need to do is go to the end. So this one's sewn shut, this end, and this one is open. The one that is sewn shut, we can now clip off that cord. And I'm also going to clip off a corner right there just to make it easier to turn inside out. Now the trick to this is to start at the bottom and work at the bottom. You can grab your cord and you can push some of it down but you cannot slide it off this way. It'll get all bunched up at the bottom but I do bring some down to work with. And so the hardest part is just getting this piece started. And once you get that started, the rest is pretty easy, depending on your fabric. The thicker it is, the harder it's going to be to work with. Okay, now I just need to just keep sliding that down until it's completely inside out, or right side out. Okay, so this is right side out now. I want to cut the very tip off, okay? So this is still attached. I'm not going to just cut this cord off because this is a kind of big seam right here and I don't want to deal with sewing through that. So I'm basically cutting that seam off along with the cord. Now both sides are open. And I'm going to go to my ironing board and I'm going to find that seam and I'm just going to work with it a little bit. I'm going to put that seam on the outside and then I'm going to press it. Find that seam, put it on the outside and press. These are pressed. Now what I want to do is just top stitch these. I am just going to choose a coordinating thread, 
line the side up with the side of my presser foot and run a stitch all the way down. It'll be a quarter inch from the side if I line it up on my presser foot and then I'll go to the opposite side, line it up, run a stitch all the way down the side and I'll do that on all three. Now my straps are finished and I'm going back to that piece we haven't worked on yet, the back side of the bag. And all these will be sewn to this piece. And what I had to do first was just fold this in half at the top so I can find the center. It's right there. And I made a mark. Now I took my ruler and on each side of that mark, I don't know if you can see it, but here's the mark. I'm going to measure half an inch over and make a mark there. And then from the center, half an inch over and make a mark there. Now on the very bottom, folded it in half, found the center and that's right there. And then I took my ruler from the center over two inches, made a mark. Center over two inches, make a mark. Okay, so I'm going to start with the short one. And that, here's the center, that half inch mark. I'm going to take this little strap and just go like this and lay the inside of the strap on that half inch mark and stick a pin in it. And then I'm going to bring the other side over to that other half inch mark and stick a pin in it. Okay, so now the long straps. I am just going to take one end and lay it right next to that strap, short one I just pinned. And I'll stick a couple pins in that. And then I'm going to bring the strap down this way making sure it's nice and straight. And I'm going to lay the inside on that mark two inches over and stick a couple pins. Oops. Okay, let me do that again because it was out of the shot. Okay, I'm bringing this straight down. And here's the center. Here's that two inch mark. I'm laying the inside right there and sticking a couple pins in it. Now I'm just going to do the same to the opposite side with this strap. Now I'm going to my machine and getting everything sewn on. I have four pieces to sew at the top. And I will go over each one of those about five times. This is a stress point. It needs to be super durable. Then I'll come down to the bottom. Sew over that five times. Okay. My straps are sewn on, and now what I want to do is go to my flap and go to the back and find the center with your ruler and mark it. So there's my center mark. And now I will line that up, the center, with the center of this bag and stick a pin in it. Okay, so this is the top. I had to turn it upside down so I could work on it easier. So I have the right sides together. Here's the right side of the flap, right side of the bag, center pinned. And I'm just going to stick another pin at this end and one at this end. And then I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to stitch this flap on. And all I do 
is I'll start outside of the flap a little bit, go forward back, straight stitch all the way across, stop outside of the flap, and I'll go back and do it again. Quick note, I've been using a denim needle on this whole bag. We're starting to get a little thick now, and a denim needle is pretty important. Okay, now the flap is attached, straps are attached. Now it's time to put the front and the back of the bag together. The first thing I have to do, I'm going to my front piece and I'm tucking everything in. We need to find the edge of the bag. Okay, now we need to put right sides together and I need to tuck everything in here. I need to tuck these straps up and out of the way. Clip a couple threads. <laughs> okay. The flap is up, this little strap is up, and these are free and clear of any straps or anything. And now I'm just going to put this on top of that one, right sides together, and I'm going to pin all the way around the U-shape and not across the top. Okay, everything is pinned. Now I'm just going to take it to my machine and stitch around the edge, half an inch seam allowance, double stitched. Now the bag's all sewn. I just have to clip those little notches all the way around so that when we turn it right side out, it lays nice and smooth. Okay, so now I can turn it right side out. Okay, it's really starting to look like a backpack. Now I need to just take it over to my ironing board and I'm just going to press the edges here where I just sewed the seam and then we need to make the lining. Okay, so I'm trying this on. It feels really nice. I like the strap length. I didn't want it hanging too far down. I haven't done the lining yet. But now look what happens when I let go of the straps. You see, you can't see that fringe underneath. The straps being at the bottom, suck that bottom up and it's the fringe is kind of up underneath. So I still think this is a really cute look. Okay, this is the lining I want to use. Found it at a thrift store. It's Peanuts, Charlie Brown, and I love using goofy, whimsical lining on my bags. So I'm just taking that large body of the bag pattern, going to trace around it twice and cut it out. Okay, so for this lining, I'm not doing pockets or a closure, but I do have a tutorial on a U-shaped bag where I have pockets and a magnetic snap closure, and I'll put the link to that in my description if you want to do that. So. You just put right sides together and I am going to leave about a seven inch gap at the bottom and pin from this corner down. I'll start down there so that I don't forget my gap from here to here. This part will be open. I'll pin everything else, not the top. Now all I have to do, now that it's all pinned, is sew it. I will start here, do a quarter inch seam allowance, sew all the way to here, and go back and do it again so it's extra durable. Now I'm just going to make some snips on that curve before I turn it right side out and press it. 
And then I have to turn it inside out again. Now I want to attach the lining to the bag. And I have to move this flap up and out of the way. Any straps down and out of the way. I want the opening to the backpack here. And I have my lining inside out. And I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to put it over top of the bag and pull the bag through it. Now my hole's a little narrow down there, so I might have to work with this a little bit. Okay, so my lining is on the outside of the bag and I'm lining up the top of the purse to the top of the lining. Now this lining has a seam right here and the bag has a seam on the inside. I'm going to line up those seams and I'm going to stick a pin on either side of it. The seams are typically too hard to get a pin through so I just go real close on both sides. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side, find that seam, find the seam on the inside of the bag and pin that. That gives me a good start. Now that the two sides are pinned, I'm just going to pin the rest of the lining evenly around the bag. Okay, now that everything's pinned, I just need to put this in my machine and stitch around the edge and I will do about half an inch seam allowance all the way around and I'll go around twice. Okay, I'm just going to remove this front plate, slide the opening over top of this little arm. Okay, top is all sewn. Now I can pull this back up and over the bag. A little tight at the bottom. I should have left a little bit of a bigger hole. Okay, so here's my lining. It still has an open end right here. Now you can press this and pin this, but what I normally do is I just tuck this in about three quarters of an inch so that there's no raw edges. And I go to my machine and I put my needle in about here and I just sew very close to the edge so that we have a nice clean seam. Now the bottom is all sewn shut. I can shove this back inside my purse. Now I'm going to go to my ironing board and I am going to press this seam nice. I just usually start on the flap when I press this and then I just work my way around the bag, moving the bag. And if your fabric is heat sensitive, you can still lay a tea towel over top of it at this point. Now I just want to run a top stitch all the way around the bag, including the back side, this lining. And so I will just slide it into my sewing machine. You can pin this all around to make sure everything's perfectly lined up, but I don't typically do that. And I will do about quarter of an inch seam allowance. I like to line the edge of my bag 
up with my presser foot because this top stitch will be seen and you want it nice and neat. Okay, it's all done. I want to see how it hangs when it has stuff in it. So I'm going to put my makeup case, my wallet, my Kindle, some Sunnies, some gum. So let's see how it hangs when it's occupied. Okay, just what I hoped. When you fill it up, it doesn't suck under like we talked about before. And you can see all those fringes. So cute. I just love this. Here's what it looks like. You know, it's a little slouchy. But when I would sell slouchy purses, I would put slouchy right in the description. You could always back your two fabrics, the body of the bag, front and back, with fusible medium weight interfacing, webbing. And you could also do that to your lining, put a little snap or whatever. But that's perfectly fine for me. It's got this great little handle. If you don't want to throw it on your back, you can throw it on your arm if you're in a hurry. I'm moving this. I'm really loving this. Okay, now I'm going to put it on. The reason I put it on my white dress is because it's a little hard to see on my black one, but ta-da! All right, I thank you so, so much for watching. I'll give it a little slow spin around for you.